Well, welcome to worship. I would invite you all to join me at this time in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy on us. Our sin is heavy, and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined, and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the Spirit to follow in the way of Jesus, as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, rich in mercy, by the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace where all are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and to serve others. We are so excited because APLC is going to be offering an in-person worship service starting on April 4th on Easter Sunday at 11 o'clock in the outdoor chapel. We hope you'll consider joining us. For those who are still hoping to worship at home, we are still going to be offering an online worship experience, but if you are ready to come back in person, please join us on April 4th at 11 o'clock a.m. And for every Sunday in April, we will be offering one Sunday morning worship service at 11 o'clock in the outdoor chapel. Um, please note that we will be using masks and social distancing as we continue to offer a worship experience that's safe for everyone. And we hope that you'll look for a link to make a reservation in your Friday email. Um, also, in the spirit of Easter, coming up we have an Easter egg hunt for our youth in grades 5 and under. Our Easter egg hunt will be April 3rd at 10 o'clock a.m. in the church parking lot, and keep an eye out for more information about that coming out soon. But right now, we are currently in the season of Lent, and our theme this Lent is building a community of grace. There are so many ways you can walk through Lent with us, um, hopefully you've received your devotional booklet, and that's a great resource to walk through day by day with this whole community in devotion and prayer. Uh, the Lenten jars practice that we are talking about, where you can collect your change in a Lenten jar um, to bring and gather at Easter Sunday, and we're going to be donating that change to some of our mission partners. And um, also, we have our live-streamed Wednesday night Lenten services at 7 o'clock p.m., we have a community forum on Wednesday nights at 7.45 p.m. centered around homelessness. There are so many ways to be involved this Lent. For more information about all of these, check out our special Lent website, aplc.org slash Lent. Also coming up this the weekend of March 20th through 21st, Chip and Mike are holding a Lenten learning and serving event called Spring into Faith with adults on Saturday and youth and family on Sunday. As part of this day of learning and service, our congregation is collecting art supplies like glue sticks, foam shaving cream, liquid watercolors, craft acrylic paint, masking tape, and half-inch ribbon. And we're also taking donations of dog and cat food for Meals on Wheels Animal Program. All these donations can be dropped off at our church office, and more information about the weekend event is available on our website, aplc.org slash Lent, where you can also sign up for that service learning opportunity. And now, let us turn our hearts and mind to the hearing of God's word. The first reading is from Numbers, chapter 21, beginning at verse 4. From Mount Or, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. <clears throat> the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? wilderness? For there is no food and water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. 
and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze, put it on a pole, and whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Ephesians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. You were dead through trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, We were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that when the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
Well, hi, friends. How are you doing today? I have a question for you. I'm wondering, do you think it would make sense to start reading a story halfway through to the end? Well, I have a secret to tell you. That's what we're going to do today with our gospel reading. But I want to tell you the first half of the story. So there's this guy named Nicodemus, right? And he is kind of a really important sort of fellow. And he was really curious about this Jesus guy and wanted to kind of know what he was all about. So he visited Jesus, but he did it at nighttime because he didn't really want anybody to know. And Jesus told Nicodemus that nobody can be in the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus was a little bit confused by that. He said, born, born again? How can that happen? How can a grown-up person like me like enter my mommy's tummy again to be born a second time? And Jesus told him, well, not like that. He said he actually meant like being born again from God and, and by water and the Spirit. And, and what he was talking about was our baptism when we're reborn in God as God's children. And then Jesus tells Nicodemus this really, really great verse. It's John 3, 16. And maybe you've heard it before. So if you have, just I want you to recite it with me. But Jesus tells Nicodemus that, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Wow, isn't that great that God loves you and God loves all of us so much that he sent Jesus so that we can have life in Jesus? I think that would be a great verse for you to try to memorize. And if you do, I want you to let us know about it sometime, okay? All right, fantastic. Now let's rise for our gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. In our reading from the Old Testament today, we hear the story of the Israelites being afflicted by these poisonous snakes in the wilderness and God providing them with healing by having Moses construct this bronze serpent that he lifts up on a pole. The author of our gospel 
draws a parallel with this story, telling us that just as Moses lifted up this bronze serpent in the wilderness, so too must the Son of Man be lifted up. The Son of Man, Jesus, the Savior, in whom we find salvation, not from poisonous snakes, but from all the powers of sin and death in this world. Jesus was raised up on a wooden cross on a hill outside the city. It's really a striking comparison that John uses here, made even more powerful by the verse which follows. I mean, there's a reason why John 3.16 is one of the most popular, well-known verses in the Bible. John very plainly and simply reveals that this action from God, this raising up of the Son of Man, God becoming human in Jesus, the Incarnation, and God's uh, terrible crucifixion, his suffering and death on the cross, God's taking on the fullness of sin and evil in the world, his execution by the state in collusion with the religious establishment. This lifting up of the Son of Man is motivated by God's great love for the world. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only Son, so that everyone who believes in the Son may not perish, but have eternal life. And then in John 3, 17, we learn more about God's motivation, that God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Salvation of the world is God's priority, not the judgment and condemnation of the world. So full of sin and suffering, and yet loved by God nonetheless. This motivation of love and intention of salvation are a grace-filled foundation for how we think of the character of God. And God's intention for the world is salvation. Thanks be to God. Our theme this Lent is building a community of grace. And I have been thinking this week about what this passage in particular means for community. The crisis that the Israelites were facing in the wilderness and the serpents was absolutely a crisis experienced by a community. And the book of John was written to this group of early Christians also wrestling with this question of how to be community in this world. And this passage in John brought to mind uh, a part of this book by the author and pastoral psychotherapist Margaret Kornfeld. And she describes in her well-known book about caring for people in community that there are three simple yet profound realities that exist in a caring community. And to be clear, I don't think any of these are going to come to a shock, as a shock to most of us. But I'd like you to listen to them. They're, they include the following three realities. Number one, members communicate with each other honestly and without fear. Number two, members resolve conflicts with each other individually and within the group. And number three, members learn to love themselves so that they can love each other and reach out to strangers. And I mention these not only because they're timely to our Lenten theme, but because in this passage from John, the themes of love, honesty, and courage are all present. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. I wonder, have you ever experienced a community or a group of some sort where you felt kept in the dark, where you didn't feel safe to communicate openly, where conflicts were left to fester unresolved long past the point where it even made sense? I imagine that most all of us have experienced this at some point in our life.
It isn't a fun experience, and it helps me understand the idea that sometimes we experience judgment by virtue of how we stay fearful of light, of what the light would reveal of our true selves and our true feelings, fearful of speaking the truth to each other, of the conflict that might result, even fearful of being loved by God because it might mean that that means we have to love ourselves and in turn show that love to the people around us too. And at the same time, I think most of us long for the light. And I don't know if you've noticed, but Oprah was in the news this past week, and it brought to mind this wise observation that I heard from a commencement speech Oprah Winfrey made back in 2013. And she shares the following. She writes, I have to say that the single most important lesson I learned in 25 years talking every single day to people, was that there is a common denominator in our human experience. Most of us, I tell you, we don't want to be divided. What we want, the common denominator that I found in every single interview, is we want to be validated. We want to be understood. I have done over 35,000 interviews in my career, and as soon as that camera shuts off, Everyone always turns to me and inevitably, in their own way, asks this question. Was that okay? I heard it from President Bush. I heard it from President Obama. I've heard it from heroes and from housewives. I've heard it from victims and perpetrators of crimes. I even heard it from Beyonce and all of her Beyonce-ness. She finishes performing, hands me the microphone, and says... Was that okay? Friends and family, yours, enemies, strangers, in every argument, in every encounter, every exchange, I will tell you they all want to know one thing. Was that okay? Did you hear me? Do you see me? Did what I say mean anything to you? The quote ends here, and there is something within each of us that longs for the light, that longs to be seen by our community. All of us at times stay in the darkness, fearful of what the light might reveal about us and our deeds. And I wonder if maybe the sun who is lifted up, Jesus, who is the light that has come into the world, who loves the world and has come to save the world, is the one who enables us to enter into the light. Jesus, after all, is the one who took on all the sins and evils of the world, all the darknesses that we would rather hide behind or away. Jesus carried them to the cross and did so out of great love. And maybe, just maybe, a community centered around this loving work of Jesus, this grace that God has freely given to us, can also live in the revealing courageous light of Jesus, in whom we can have confidence that our deeds have been done in God. Maybe such a community can communicate openly, can work through conflict to come to see each other more clearly and with more grace, and can learn to love ourselves so we can share that love with this world, that love that is loved by God so dearly. I'd like to end uh, by sharing about our community forum last night, where we had the opportunity to hear stories from our great dedicated volunteer community here at Abiding Presence, who have for years shared this love of God with the world by doing ministry with one of our mission partners, Haven for Hope, an organization that supports people experiencing homelessness here in San Antonio. And as we heard stories of baking cookies and sharing coffee with the people gathered in the courtyard at Haven for Hope, I was struck by what several volunteers shared. One volunteer shared that as they sat and chatted with the gathered community at Haven for Hope, listening to people's stories of struggles and trials, of their joys and pains, one gets a sense that above all, folks just want to be seen for who they are not defined by whatever trials or bad luck they're going through at the time, but for their whole story in the fullness of its light and its darkness, to really be heard and understood, 
and that in turn, another volunteer shared that listening to the stories of others can more fully illuminate our own stories, full of our own darknesses and lights. What a powerful witness to God's grace in community with others. And we know that all of these stories are held graciously in the hands of a God whose light beams forth out of God's love for the whole world. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the Church the world, and all in need. You sent your Son that the world might be saved through him. Inspire the witness of the church throughout the world. Empower missionaries, Bible translators, and ministers of service in your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. Help us recover from the freeze, from pipes and reconstruction to plants. Give water to our thirsty lands and aquifers. Nurture spring growth that feeds hungry creatures. 
Bless farmers as they prepare for the growing season. Safeguard our infrastructures of electricity, water, and fuels. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. You sustain your people in the wilderness. Give courage to all who lead times of crisis and scarce resources. Prosper the work of those who aid victims of famine, drought, and COVID-19. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your mercy endures forever. Deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry or need shelter. Give life in places where death seems triumphant. Give healing to those who are sick and comfort those who mourn, especially Debbie Perry, Joy Cox, Glenn Ferraris. Bless those we now name aloud and remember silently in our hearts. Give us patience and courage when the way seems long. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your son was lifted up that whoever believes might have eternal life. We praise you for all who have died in Christ. Bring us with all the saints into the fullness of your promises. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please, wherever you're at today, if you're worshiping from home, share Christ's peace. Maybe send a text message or an email, but reach out and share God's peace with this world. John, peace be with you. Today we reflected on how God's saving work on the cross is motivated by God's great love for the world. As we strive to build a community of grace this Lent, let us be motivated also by love as we give of ourselves in many ways, in service to our neighbors, in prayer and devotion, and in our offerings. And we prayerfully ask that God will use our offerings of love to share God's light with the world. Thank you for your continued generosity. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have blessed us with our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our communities, and the resources of this earth. Lead us and guide us to use these gifts in accordance with your will, for the sake of the one who is with us to the end. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the thanksgiving for the word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, and wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, 
the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.